for this morning is uh, going to be the, the two sins and it's August 3rd, 2020, uh, August 3rd, 2024. So a few Sabbaths ago, we had looked at uh, 1 John chapter 4 and 1 John chapter 5. And we're going to look at it again, verses 16 to verse 20. And it's covering, like, uh, we had quite a bit of discussion on the two sins. And uh, here, in these two, uh, in these verses, it's very clearly telling us what it is. Two verses. If anyone sins, if anyone sees his brother sinning a sin, which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin, not leading to death. There is a sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that or unrighteousness. So it makes very clear that all unrighteousness is sin. And there is sin not leading to death. So it, it very clearly defines that all unrighteousness is sin. But there is a sin in the context of all unrighteousness is sin. And then it says there is a sin. There is sin not leading to death. So that is where we're going to look at. So all unrighteousness is when we break the Ten Commandments, that is all unrighteousness. We are doing everything that is unrighteousness. That is sin. Then John makes sure to be understood this. It is not applying specifically to breaking the Ten Commandments. It's talking of there is a sin leading to death. And we have covered this in the Sabbath class. And I want us to make sure that this is understood as clearly as possible. So what is the sin leading to death? And what is the sin not leading to death? And we're going to look at those. Now, uh, first, we're going to see what Jesus himself has clearly given us uh, something that needs to be understood. He's very clear and very specific on this. For that, we will turn to John chapter 8. John chapter 8 and verses 21 to verse 24. John chapter 8, verses 21 to verse 24. Then Jesus said to them again, they were questioning uh, Jesus' authority and, and his witness. So here, and this is the scribes and the Pharisees, the leadership, the Pharisees. Then Jesus said to them again, I'm going away and you will seek me and will die in your sin. And what? You will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. Why? Because you are going to die in your sin. So the Jews said, will he kill himself? Because he says, where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, you are from beneath, I am from above. This is in the context of the sin. He's saying, you are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Then verse 24. Therefore I said to you, you will die in your sins. For, for if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sin. Three times, very clearly, Jesus states this. And he said, for if you do not believe that I am he, you will what? Die in sin your sin. So what is Jesus referring to here? That if you do not believe that I am he, 
he is the true witness because the context is referring to who's the true witness. So Jesus is clearly stating, and I'll read it for you, in verse 16, I mean verse 15, 13, the Pharisees therefore said to him, you bear witness of yourself, your witness is not true. Now look at what Jesus said, verse 14, Jesus answered and said to them, even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true, for I know where I came from and where I am going, but you do not know where I come from and where I am going. You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one according to the flesh. Jesus does judge, but his judgment is, you will see, the very words that I have spoken to you will judge you in the last day. My judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I am with the Father who sent me. So here, Jesus is teaching us and showing us that if you don't believe that I am he, if you don't believe Jesus Christ's revelation, if you reject Jesus Christ's revelation of his Father, he is the true witness. And he's giving this witness of his father. If you reject that, you will die in your sins. There it is. Now, to make sure that we have understood this very clearly, we'll make look at another passage where Jesus uh, talks again in this connection. We'll look at verse 39. And Jesus said, for judgment I have come into the world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be made blind. So here he's referring to the Pharisees again, and he's telling them that you claim that you have the truth. You claim that you know God. You claim all these things. And then he says, for judgment I have come into this world that those who do not see, that those who have not understood all what you are teaching and promoting, all of them, they are still in a good position. And that those who see may be made blind. Dear ones, keep this in mind. We're going to go through and look at it in, in this morning's message that if we reject Jesus Christ's revelation, that is the sin that will lead to death. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? Now they are questioning him. And here we can be doing exactly the same thing. And this is what happens. Every time we try and and give this message of the character of God and the truth that Jesus revealed about his father, this is what goes on. Then some of the Pharisees here were with him, heard this word and said to him, are we blind also? So what we do, we won't take Jesus Christ's revelation, we will go where? To the Old Testament. And from the Old Testament, they will take what is written there and try and promote God's character in the light of what the Old Testament has stated, not in the light of what Jesus has revealed. This is then what happened. And Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. If what? We didn't have this knowledge, if we didn't understand the truth that Jesus Christ came and gave, if we didn't have that revelation, what is he saying? If you were blind, you would have no sin. It will not be held against us. But we're going to see that as we start understanding God's agape love and the truth that Jesus gave, then we'll see what ends up happening. If you were blind, you'd have no sin. But now you say, we see. 
And how does that apply to us today? We will turn around and say, look, the Old Testament clearly states God committed this genocide. God did this. God did that. God sanctioned this. God promoted this. This is what he's saying then. If you were blind, you'd have no sin. But now you say we see. So we're using something that is not from Jesus' personal revelation. Then Jesus says, therefore your sin remains. One more passage in this connection from Jesus is in John chapter 15. John chapter 15. And we're looking at verses 20 to 24. And this is so, so important for us in the light of the time period we're living in, in the light of understanding God's character of agape love, we're going to look at John chapter 15 and we'll start with verse 20. John chapter 15 and verse 20. Jesus is speaking again. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, and why did they persecute Jesus? Remember Saul, before he became the apostle Paul, what was he doing? He was persecuting the Christians. Why? Because of his understanding from the Old Testament about God's character. And he used his understanding to persecute the Christians. So here Jesus is saying, remember the words that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. Why? Because of their understanding of God. They, with their erroneous understanding of God, they are involved in persecution. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things... They will do to you in, for my name's sake. What? They will do all these things in whose? Jesus is saying, in my name's sake. Why? Because they are still living in that sin of theirs. Because they do not know him who sent me. They will do all these things because they do not know whom? They don't know Jesus' Father. The Father that they are believing in is this violent Father. And that violent Father, Jesus made very clear, is no one else but the devil himself. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. There you go. No excuse for their sin. And to close this whole issue of sin, in this uh, connection in what we are discussing, I want us to look at James chapter 4. James chapter 4, and we'll see very clear what James has to say in this connection. James chapter 4. Excuse me here. James chapter 4 and verse 17. James 4, 17. Therefore, to him who knows to do good, what do they know? They know to do good. Where did they learn it from? From the person of Jesus Christ. To, therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. So if we, through Jesus Christ's revelation, know the good, which is God's agape love, and then we don't live by it, for us, it is sin. I want us now to look at this whole issue as, as far as death is concerned, because the, the whole issue of sin of the sin that leads to death involves the death principle. And, in, and 
the Paul writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 24 to 26. I'm not going to read that whole section. I'll just confine it to verse 24 to 26. This is in terms of coming to the end. Then comes the end when Jesus, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power, and he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. Put all enemies under his feet. And here we are very clearly told by Paul again in this passage, the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. Death is what? An enemy of God. Death is not something from God. It is an enemy of God. That is what is going to be what? At the end, when he, till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. To make sure that, and we've used this verse quite a few times before, but in this context, I want to make sure that we understand clearly because that is the sin that leads to death. And death belong to whom? Who is responsible for the death? Uh, Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 and 15. In as much then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So when we understand God's agape love, we will be set free from this fear of death. And the, and the fear in John chapter 1 verses 4, uh, 1 John chapter 4 verses 16 and 17, fear has to do with punishment. Fear has to do with to torment. And agape love sets us free from knowing that that kind of a torment, that kind of a punishment is not of God. For this now, I'm going to read for us from 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians in the context, dear ones, in the context of the Old Testament, and Jesus Christ's revelation in the context of the sin that doesn't lead to death and the sin that leads to death. Second Corinthians chapter 3, and I'll start from verse 12. I'm not going to go through uh, from the beginning of the verse. It would have been nice, but for, for time's sake, I'll start with verse 12. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Paul is talking in terms of giving this revelation. So he's saying, look, I'm speaking with this boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. And what was passing away? All that wrong understanding that they had of God, that was all passing away. But their minds were blinded. Their minds were blinded to the truth, to the truth that Jesus was giving. And then, pay attention to this for us. For until this day, the same veil remains unlif unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. That can apply to us today. Very clearly that can apply to us today. If we are reading the Old Testament, then, and not understanding the Old Testament in the light of Jesus Christ's revelation, then a veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. The only time that veil is taken away, only time that veil is taken away, because the veil is taken away in Christ. That wrong understanding that leads to death, the sin that leads to death, the wrong way of understanding the Old Testament, 
not in the light of understanding the Old Testament through faith in Jesus Christ, because that's what Paul had told Timothy, that you have to understand the Holy Scriptures, the Old Testament Scriptures, in the light of nobody else, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Then he said, for all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. If we are not looking at the Old Testament Scriptures through faith in Jesus Christ, then what is happening? All scripture then is what? Not given to us through that revelation of God. Why? Because we are not understanding it the right way. So it does not become for us profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction in righteousness, that the man of God may be what? Complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Cannot happen. Impossible. And here we are living in this final phase, I believe, in the history of the world. This has to be sealed in us. This truth has to be completely and totally sealed in us. This agape love character of the Father, of God, that Jesus revealed, has to be sealed in us. And we study the Old Testament scriptures in the light of Jesus Christ's revelation. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, when one turns to the Lord Jesus Christ, the veil is taken away. Once we look at everything through the lens of Jesus Christ's revelation, that veil of erroneous understanding of the Holy Scriptures, which is the Old Testament, is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We are free from this wrong understanding of God's character. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, the truth of God, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. What happens as we behold God's agape love, as we understand God's character of agape love, this change happens in us, we are transformed into the same image. This is a powerful statement Paul is making. Can you imagine? In the same image, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Which means to say, in this earthly domain of ours, we will no longer be feeding from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We'll be feeding from the tree of life, and Jesus Christ is the tree of life. Verse chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, first Corinth, I mean 2 Corinthians chapter 4, continuing what we just finished from verse 3. Therefore, since we have this ministry, what ministry? The very ministry that we are talking of here now. This ministry, the gospel of character of God, to get out of the sin that leads to death, to be no longer in that. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced, verse 2, what he's saying? But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. If we don't understand God's character the way it should be understood, then we have not renounced the hidden things of shame. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God, which is what? At this stage, the New Testament has not been canonized. So he's talking of the Old Testament. Not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully. We are not being deceived in understanding the Old Testament Holy Scriptures deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. And who's the truth? Nobody else but the person of Jesus Christ, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The one sin that what? Leads to death. They are perishing whose minds the God of this age has blinded, 
Keep in mind, this is referring to the Old Testament, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Applying to us, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your born servants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God, the true God, God the Father, for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our heart to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God, where? In the face of Jesus Christ. There it is. To know the glory of God, we can only know it through where? It is in the face of Jesus Christ. This is now the tough part. As long as, remember what Jesus has said, if I had not come and spoken to them, what? They would have no sin. But now that I have spoken to you, your sin remains. And we will wonder and most probably think, well, Ozzy, why are you over and over again, Sabbath after Sabbath, Sabbath class, on the same topic and there's no end to your topic of God's character of agape love and the truth about God? Because that's how important it is. And then we'll say, well, what I knew before about God was better than what I'm learning now. Then my belief is this. Why would you not want to know something about God's agape love that you didn't know before? To the depth that God wants us to know. Why? Because the joy of knowing somebody that was demonized, that was misrepresented, and now, through Jesus Christ's revelation, we have come to know the truth. Nobody would want to reject that. So once, and Jesus Christ himself had said that God the Father has put his seal on Jesus Christ. Once we have been given this revelation of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, because that is the sin that is unpardonable, when the Holy Spirit convicts us, as long as you are not convicted, you are still wrestling and battling with it, that's a different matter. But once the Holy Spirit has convicted us and given us this truth, and we are sealed in it, so I could bring it down and apply it to myself. As, as clearly and as honestly I can, I can apply it, I'll apply it to myself. Seven years after, approximately seven years after I started studying the Bible and learning Christianity through the lens of the Bible, I started getting certain understanding that was radically different to what I understood prior to this understanding. And this is where I am today, since 1983. And I've studied since then and confine my studies of the scripture from Genesis to Revelation or nothing else but Jesus Christ's revelation of God. And I believe for myself, nobody, and I'm not talking proudfully or in any way arrogantly, I'm telling you from the depth of my heart, nothing matters to me. I would not be standing here and doing all of this because that's not what I really like to do. But the reason I do this, the reason I have this passion in me, and I cannot let it go because of what I have learned. I have studied religion across the board here once to the best of my ability, all major religions to the best of my ability, not in the depth that I have studied the Bible, but I have looked at them. And there was one flaw in every belief system, including Christianity, including Judaism, including Islam, including Hinduism, 
one major flaw in every one of their belief. The God that they all were involved with and worshipping, and I'm stating this including me before 1983, was not the true God that Jesus Christ revealed. So I have to be clearly honest with you all. This is sealed in me. Nothing will ever be able to take this away from me. If this is ever taken away from me, I'm going to read to you the result. I'm going to Hebrews chapter 4. I would have liked to have gone from chapter 5, verse 12 and onwards, but I'll just confine it to Hebrews chapter 6. And I'm going to read from verse 4. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4. Keeping in mind what I have just discussed and said about myself. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come if, if they fall away to renew them to repentance. Since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. Once we have understood this truth and it is sealed in us, if in any way we allow any person, any preacher, any teacher, any theologian, even if an angel from heaven that we think is an angel from heaven, but it could be the angel that was in heaven and his emissaries will try and come and convince me otherwise, it cannot happen. And I'm again stating this. This is sealed in me. This is why I have this passion and I promote nothing else but this message. And Denise and I, even with our ministry, with no financial gain, we're not looking for any financial gain. We have committed our ministry in every way possible. That's why we even have our uh, Grace Unlimited Ministries under the Apostolic Church of God Seventh Day Banner. Why? We didn't have to do this, but we are doing this because we want this truth to be given to every person possible because this is the only truth for this end time and we have looked at this all this time since I have been here and every step of the way as I have presented the message here for all this time it has been focused on nothing else but that so my prayer for all of us because once we get this you have the greatest gift that God can give us and that is the work of the Holy Spirit to teach us everything that Jesus taught.